happy AAPI month. Although it should be AAPI month every single month, every single day in the year. We love Asian American writers. We love Asian people in general. I want to make this video because first of all, I'm an avid reader. But second, I have been doing my schooling, my masters and a lot of work recently over the past few years. So I haven't had the time. I also was an English major in undergrad. So I didn't have time to read things that I actually wanted to do. And the only time I had for reading was on the subway going to school and coming back from school. But now that I have graduated in the past few days, I have some time to read and I have a lot of recommendations. I also realized that a lot of the books that we praise in society are kind of white authors. Although I know there are a lot of people of color, a lot of authors that are immigrants, but I feel like they don't get the spotlight that they deserve. So this video, I will give the spotlight to all those authors these are exclusively, for the most part, my favorite immigrant authors, people of color writers, they deserve it all. So these are my top eight books of the year, of my entire life. And when I pick my favorite books, when I pick the best books in the game, I look for books that have literally transformed my life, transformed my way of thinking. If I read a book and I don't get any intellectual development from it, if I'm not thinking beyond what I've already been thinking before I read the book, then it's probably not a good book in my, in my eyes, you know? So when I recommend these books, I really mean it. Like I really thought deeply about which books I'm choosing and I want you guys to have the intellectual development, all of those revelations after reading these books. I promise you that it will have the same impact on you as it did on me. We are going for books that are there for enjoyment, but also teach you things, also teach you about history, also teach you about different generations and different cultures. That's what we're doing here. Put your bootstraps on and let's get to it. <laughs> Before I put all these gems out there for free, make sure you like and subscribe and you follow me on my Instagram, labyrinthav so that you can keep continuing to join in and you don't get all this entertainment and all these gems for free. All right, let's get started now. All right, the first book that we have is A Thousand Splendid Sons. And this book, let me tell you, I read this in 2020, I believe. It has changed my life and it has really broadened my thinking and it really started my whole journey with finding books that are more related to my culture and more related to my experiences. This is amazing. I literally read all of Khaled Husseini's writings after reading this book because I fell in love with his writing so quickly and the way he talks in his books is just incredible. Incredible. But essentially A Thousand Sons and Sons takes place in Afghanistan. It takes place during the traumatic, traumatic, it takes place during the traumatic war. And it also talks a lot about how women are silenced. You're going to see that that is a very common theme in a lot of the books that I read about women and how they are very silenced in their cultures and in the generation that they grew up in. One of the protagonists in the story, her name is Mariam or Mariam, she gets married off at a very young age in an arranged marriage and she isn't able to have kids and in that generation and in that culture you were supposed to try to bear sons because the sons are looked as you know, higher than daughters, they're looked at the breadwinners of the family in the future and so she isn't able to bear any kids so her husband is always very mad at her and she goes through a lot of hardship and trauma and then there's another protagonist in the story who comes in later on, her name is Layla and she is much younger and she is forced to be taken in into this family and it just talks about all the trauma, all the hardships that women go through and also it just talks about the war that they're going through and this is such a real life event so many people died and went through this traumatic event during the Afghani war and a lot of people are still going through it right now and it's just a really awful account about this real life occurrence but it really ends on a hopeful note I don't know how Khalid Husseini ends up doing this in every single book he really ends in a good way and it just made me so emotional I love this book so much it really just shows you how much sacrifice and how much woman go through. This book, it's the one, it really changed my life for me. Alright, next up, The Joy Luck Club. Let me tell you about this book. I actually read this book recently in the past few months. You guys have probably heard about this book, me talking about it in my vlogs. Amy Tan also changed the game for me. So we have Khalid Husseini here, who is top tier. Amy Tan is also a very close, close to number one. They are both incredible writers. After reading this book, I immediately had to go watch this film on Amazon Prime 
and then I had to go watch the Amy Tan documentary on Netflix and I literally went through a whole spiral finding all of her books and looking at all of her stuff. She inspires me so much as a writer again and it's like incredible how much she accomplished with this book. When she published this book in the 90s, her, her fame went crazy. She really put Asian Americans on the map and the way that she represents them in this book, a lot of people might think that it's stereotypical, but honestly at the end of the day, it's her life and she went through this regardless of if it's stereotypical or not. It's her experience and you can't negate that, you know? But anyways, this book is amazing. It's about mother-daughter relationships in different generations, in different cultures, and it's about four mothers who moved from China in 1949, they moved to San Francisco and they create a club called the Joy Love Club where they play mahjong, they eat dim sum, and they just gossip and talk. And they grew up in the early 1900s and they came together in a whole different country to talk and you know build this community that they had so closely knitted back at home in China. And it also talks about the complex relationships that the mothers have with their daughters and vice versa because of the language barrier, because of the cultural differences, because of the generational differences, because they just think that they don't understand one another, because of all those aspects and so much more. It really made me think after I read this story and it's amazing how Amy Tan was able to really put all of these thoughts and all these different perspectives from her mother's point of view and from these daughters point of view and put it together into one seamless story it was incredible it was so great and although it is a fiction story amy tan used a lot of her life experiences and a lot of her own trauma to build her stories build her other books and she is just such an incredible writer i cannot stress that enough i'm really just on a whole journey right now just finding everything related to her y'all really thought that i was gonna end right there with an amy tan book wrong here is the next amy tan book it's called the kitchen god's wife i actually finished this in the last month so it's pretty recent all the knowledge is still juicy in my head i love this book so much as well so this book specifically talks about the perspective from two chinese mothers and they also talk about the complex relationship with their daughters and the mothers because both sides of the party think that they can understand one another because of the cultural differences because of the generational differences and the different languages and all of that we have two mothers their names are helen and winnie winnie talks about the east asian culture from when she grew up in the 1900s the very early 1900s where women had to be silenced they had to care a lot about their reputation they had to be silenced regardless of how much trauma and pain that they were going through they had to withstand so much abuse from their partners from their families and they weren't allowed to leave and all of the traditional values and it's just such a good book. It shows how the mother and daughter are finally able to talk to one another and communicate and understand one another and build empathy because of how they started talking about their traumas and they started talking about everything that made them who they are. And that just... <sighs> this book was very hard for me to read because of how realistic and because it made me start to realize how there are so many women that have to go through this but it is such a worthwhile read and it is so touching and i recommend this 100 percent 12 out of 10 10 out of 10 a thousand out of 10. all right another book that i want to talk about i actually don't have it because i had to return it to the library the other day i tried renewing it again but they didn't allow me to because i already renewed it three times but it was such a good book i finished it very recently it's called the daughters of smoke and fire I didn't think that I would like it so much, but I loved it so much. The author of the story, her name is Ava Homa or Ava Homa, and she literally has been writing the story for over 10 years. It's not something based on her real life. Obviously, she did put in some things, but a lot of the story is based off of someone that she was studying for so many years. And that is incredible. The dedication that these people have when they're writing is just incredible, and it really seeps through into their writing. And that's why I loved it so much. Her writing is very similar to Khaled Husseini and that type of theme. And that's why I loved it so much. So much more relatable to me, especially when it's something that is about Asian Americans and about traumatic things like that. Because that's how you know our people really dealt with that. And you can really resonate with things that you know that your family members or an your ancestors dealt with. So this book is about the ethnocide in Kurdistan. And it's talking about all the assault and all of the trauma that these people had to go through when they were experiencing this war. And during this time of war, 
these women were again going through so much silencing they had no right to speak up against the government they had to completely cover themselves regardless of how they wanted to dress they had to completely oppress their speech their bodies and they were not able to revolt against the government i also really resonated with the story because it talks about the elder daughter elder sister role and i haven't really read that too much in stories and it's just so incredible to see how the elder daughter is usually the protector the one that has to sacrifice everything for their family and so the characters Layla and Chia, their sister and brother and they are protecting one another but she is also very dependent on her little brother because he is a man first of all so he's able to do more in the society he's much more outspoken in society and he's allowed to be she is very dependent on him because she was never allowed to do that herself and it really just shows all of the obstacles that women face in the story and even after Layla loses her brother she is forced to make her voice stronger and she was forced to bring more power to the Kurds and defend his name and bring justice to the Kurds it's a beautiful woman empowerment story and I'm so happy that I read this story because I'm going to read it so many more times and it has probably changed my life so much for the better you should definitely read it like amazing i wish i can give these authors a kiss consensual but <laughs> they're so amazing all right the next book that i want to talk about is this book it's called heads fun it is a poetry book and i'm not just mentioning this book because my boyfriend wrote it but i'm mentioning this book because i've never read anything like this before in my life i also have so much love for this book and so much love for my partner because he put his heart and soul into it the illustrations he made are beautiful he worked on it himself for over a year he wrote everything himself and it took so much out of him and that's how you know just like how Ava Homa did it when you're working on it for years and you're putting so much of yourself in it that's how you know it's emotional that's how you know you can connect to people and it's realistic and it's really good but Headspun by Mushu Munir please get it on Amazon it's amazing it talks about so many struggles that brown boys and low-income brown boys or people of color go through that aren't really documented in stories like this especially modern day stories like this because Mashun, he is 23 just like me he grew up in Florida and he's talking about all of the struggles that he had to grow up with in a low-income neighborhood and how even though he is Muslim, even though he is a very devout Muslim, because of the circumstances he was in, he couldn't practice the way that he wanted to and he was looked down on in a negative way because of the circumstances that he could not control. And he didn't do well in school because of these circumstances, you know, his parents fighting or because of where he lived, because of his community. But even though at the end, that's what makes him him you know and the language he uses in this writing is just so beautiful it's so well thought out and i'm telling you right now this man like really put everything into this story it's on my coffee table for a reason if you need a story about you know the complex relationships with mothers how your mother is praying for your success she's making the complex relationship with your father who is such a big pillar in your life but isn't as present as you want him to be because he's constantly working or he's not even in the picture you know this book is really for you it's really amazing how he he captures the Bangladeshi American modern day perspective and I give him so much kudos hats off flowers to him and the illustration is just amazing obviously another book by Khaled Husseini you guys probably know this book this book is what what Khaled Husseini is really known for this is called The Kite Runner and there's also a movie about this I actually have to watch it because I just loved enforcing the the book that I read with the movie just so I can compare and take notes I'm so weird like that The Kite Runner is such a beautiful book it is about these two characters again in Afghanistan Amir and Hassan they are two best friends they grew up together they're almost like brothers basically but they are in different income brackets you know Hassan is much poorer and Amir is much richer you know their family works under Amir's family and Amir is very jealous and a little bit hateful honestly because his father shows a lot more allegiance and talks about Hassan more as if Hassan is his son you know so he feels a little bit jealous because he feels like he's not getting any of the attention and he feels like he's being constantly compared to the poor friend you know the poor brother and it really just talks about how because of this hate 
he betrays his friend at a time of need a time that Hassan really needs it betrays his friend and eventually he moves away to America and he has a whole different life forgetting about Hassan forgetting about their friendship but always remembering how he betrayed his friend and then by the end of the story it is such a touching story it does end in a hopeful way but there's so much sadness in between you have to really read this because it shows all the friendship it shows betrayal it shows loyalty even when you think it's too late and it just talks about how everything kind of comes full circle all right another book that i actually couldn't find at the library because i guess someone took it out what the hell why i need it but it's called a burning and the book talks about the corrupt politics in india and the censorship and how women are constantly silenced in India and in this culture. It talks about how women are constantly pushed down in society and especially in this story, there's a character or the protagonist of the story, her name is Javan, and she is a poor Muslim woman and she is wrongly accused of a terrorist attack in India and she is pushed down constantly in the media. She is used as bait for other people to progress in society. The news reporter uses her story as bait and falsely accuses her even more instead of bringing her story to light and getting her out of jail. It talks about someone else in the story. Are you kidding me? Living in New York is constantly a music festival. And it talks about another character in the story who is looked down in society because of the way that they look and they can potentially help Juvan come out of jail with their alibi but they end up choosing something completely different so that they can also advance in their career and in, the, in their society. So it just shows how because of this corrupt state in India how everyone is just trying to use one another to gain some sort of success. It just really beautifully shows how the censorship and the corruption really just changes people's ideologies and their morals and everyone's way of thinking. Such a good book. All right, the last book is called The Disappearing Act. This is not by an AAPI author. As far as I know, her name is Katherine Stedman, but I just had to include this in this video because I really love this book. I usually don't read too many mystery books but this book i literally could not stop reading it this book is talking about a character the protagonist her name is mia she is a british actress who comes to la for an acting gig and then when she's trying to leave a person her name is emily she goes missing and mia is the last person to see her she has all these cryptic messages coming up to her house over the next few weeks and months and it just prevents her from leaving because now she feels like she's connected to this mystery and this disappearance and this death even and she's just so connected the secrets just unravel and it's such a good book it really just kept me on the edge of my seat i would not be recommending this to you in an aapi immigrant books haul books tour if i didn't genuinely love this book but this book is so good you have to read it miss stedman you really did something with this one all right so that is the end of my book review haul <laughs> video I hope you guys liked all of my recommendations. I know I get a lot of questions about what books I'm reading and my audience on Instagram and TikTok especially really just love immigrant stories but they haven't really had the exposure to immigrant authors and just like what I said, they aren't really on the forefront like other authors. So I really just wanted to make this video to show you guys that there are a lot and I am trying my best to really bring them forward a lot more. And you guys deserve to read books that are closely related to your experiences and to your stories. And so that's what I want to do. If you guys want me to make this a series, I will read up all of the books you want me to read to genuinely give you the research that you need to have a good reading session. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys really like this video. Please follow me on my social medias. It's Labyrinth Ave on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere else. <laughs> I also make art and apparel and all these different merchandise. As you can see, I have some art up here. You can buy it on labyrinthave.com. And I also have a podcast. So if you want to listen to some other South Asian experiences or just life experiences in general, you can listen to it here. It's called Difficult Dish. And I hope you guys like this video. I will see you guys in the next few days because I'm posting twice a week now for now <laughs> and I will see you guys. I love you.